Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called Martini Me. And what you need is a fourth cup of vodka, two tablespoons of cranberry juice, not sweetened, and uh, one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, one and a half tablespoons of raspberry syrup, and for garnish, you're going to use some raspberry. So to make a martini me, you're going to pour all of the ingredients in a cocktail shaker with ice, shake for about 15 seconds until it's cold and chilly, strain into a cocktail or a martini glass, and garnish with your raspberries and serve a martini me, baby. Welcome back to Cocktail Sturdy Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. I hope everyone had a wonderful Valentine's Day. And if you didn't, <laughs> well, this week is for you. Mm-hmm. Hey, from weird sex to the guests to <laughs> everything we got going on. Sometimes, you know, we can be full of love. But now that the holiday is over, we have to remind ourselves that things don't always work out. Mm-hmm. New year, new me, new marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, before we introduce you guys to our uh, divorce attorney guest, <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that you are reminded to join our Patreon community. Go to patreon.com slash cocktail, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. If you just can't get enough of us every Thursday and you need more content, you can get it there. Absolutely. And our guest last week teased that she was really trying to figure out a way to do something for our listeners. So Patreon is the first to find out everything. So if you're interested in anything that we're talking about and we tease it, join Patreon because they're going to get first uh, first dibs on tickets to anything, access to anything, videos, all that good stuff. Join Patreon. Again, patreon.com slash cocktails. This week we have a turn. I've been calling you attorney Candace Smith. I just feel like that's how you're supposed to say it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Am I right? That's how the personal injury attorneys do. Yeah. <laughs> this is Julian Sanders Law Firm, yeah. the super attorney or whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> so if you guys are wondering, like, why would you guys have a divorce attorney on? You bitches aren't married. Yeah, we're not. But, um, but some of y'all are, and some of y'all are trying to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's interesting to hear the things that maybe you know and you don't consider or you never considered. And we just, you know, the reality is shit don't work out. We want and we want you to talk to somebody who knows, not us guessing because we watch Lifetime movies. Mm-hmm. We want you <laughs> ladies to be, and men, to be smart in your dating decisions and your possible Lifetime partners. And if you decide to make it legal, there are some things you maybe can't get out of or might have a little bit more time. One reason that- Or should discuss. Yeah. Or should just know. You should just know. You should have a certain level of awareness. One thing why we wanted to have, one reason why we wanted to have you on here, um, Candice, is because I talked to my cousin. He's an attorney in um, Atlanta. And he was like, you know, one thing that I think that people should just consider doing before you get married is not only premarital uh, counseling, but maybe talk to a divorce attorney just so you can be more aware of what you are getting into and the things that you might not be able to get out of, or that they might just be a little bit more difficult custody mm-hmm. battles, like all these things that maybe would be easier if you knew before, not that you should go into marriage thinking that you're going to get a divorce because mm-hmm. no one does, but it's happening a lot. It's like insurance. <laughs> you don't want to get sick. You don't want to get in a car accident, but it's good to have it. That's what somebody told me a prenup is like. And mm-hmm. I agree from the outside looking in. Now, I got a lot of questions about okay. those things <laughs> and a lot of the legalities of marriage and divorce, prenups, postnups, all these things. I watch a lot of Housewives, so I've got a lot of questions. <laughs> um, but before we do that, we created a game called I'm Curious to Know, mm-hmm. and we would like to play a quick round with you, and then we'll do weird sex, and then we'll get into it. Okay. Okay. I'll go first. Candice, I'm curious to know, what do you consider wife or husband-only benefits? Mm, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Okay, so I would say loans or gifts in excess of maybe twenty or twenty five thousand. That's the attorney in her. That is the twenty five. Let's put a pin. Let's put a pin because that could be jewelry or a car, uh huh, a boat. I'm still like, yeah, that's an attorney because I ain't buying no nigga no car. No, I don't mean that's an attorney buying that. I'm saying that's the attorney in her saying because the gift is so expensive, oh, it could be I'm something down the line. This isn't a box of Kleenex, right. Kleenex or some <laughs> chocolates 
or candle I gave you. From- she gave us an accurate, professional answer. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. What's another one? I was trying to get to something that's a little bit more legal. Um, <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, this is just personal. What would your most recent ex say about you as a partner? I love asking married people this because they're mm-hmm. like, oh, shit, I hope my husband don't listen. <laughs> most recent ex, um, probably just too unavailable. Mm. Physically and emotionally. Mm-hmm. Good answer. Right to the point. We're going to get a lot of that this episode. Okay. No, I will elaborate, I promise. Last one. I'm curious to know. If you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? Ghana. Girl, I've been I hearing Ghana there, is a good option. I've been hearing that for a while, and I want to go. Maybe this year will be the year. Okay, you guys, we're going to move on to weird sex really quick. If you're interested in purchasing this game, head on over to I'mCuriousToKnow.com. It's a card deck with over 100 different conversation starters, different open-ended questions, and things that you'll want to ask somebody who you're interested in dating, and maybe even just some of your friends to weigh in and see, you know, what's what's the climate like outside? Mm-hmm. You said a man is not a necessity, a man is a luxury, like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. This week's Weird Sex, I actually did this story a long time ago, sometime last year. But I just wanted to remind people, in the spirit of maybe your man isn't who he thought he was, or maybe your girl isn't who she thought she was <laughs> after Valentine's Day, you just found out and you listened to us this morning. Okay, so there was an influencer who created an AI version of herself oh, that'll date you for a dollar per minute. I didn't say it was going to be free. I just said it was going to be another option. So um, it's basically like a chat GPT setup mm-hmm. for someone else. Some people do feel lonely, and I get it. I'm not judging you. I respect this woman's entrepreneurship, and um, there's several other people. After her story broke late last year, there have been more and more people online who have been coming out saying that they have like apps and things like that. So please realize that you are talking to a computer. You're not talking to this <laughs> real person, and maybe the person has three fingers instead of five on one hand mm-hmm. because it's an AI version. It's not a real person. But if you're feeling lonely, before you write something really mean in our comments, I think that you should um, go sign up for somebody's app. There's so many of them out there. Just do a quick little Google search. And thank you to everybody who continues to send me this story to this day. <laughs> it was a great reminder. Uh, keep sending them to me. DM them to me on Instagram. At Kiki said so. Okay, Medina. So last night was Valentine's Day. And Mm -hmm. it was a great Valentine's Day. Not only did I have the day that I wanted, um, but I took your advice. And I went to buyhemp.com. I made my purchase. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of bottles of high love gummies. I got the flow state. I got cloud nine and I put them all in a gift basket that I was given to the man who I spent Valentine's day with. And so I even Mm -hmm. put the free sample that they sent because I was thinking about keeping it for myself, but you know, it's about sharing the love. That's what you've been saying. Mm -hmm. And you're right. So I put everything in there and I I let him open it that night. And so he was asking me questions about it. And I was like, let's just try Mm -hmm. them. I've tried it before. Let's (laughs) try it. So we tried the high love gummies and it was just like such a euphoric experience. It was just, it's like you can have great sex. And when there's romance and love is in the air and all that stuff feels good is great. Right. But then when you have Mm -hmm. the high love gummies, because they have the aphrodisiac herbs in there, everything is just elevated. You're more sensitive. I felt more relaxed. I wasn't thinking about anything that needs to happen, but you know, I good love that. Mm-hmm. I also love the high on love gummies, but they have a range of different flavors and different products for different things. I mm-hmm. absolutely love how Via Hemp, um, they range their products that range from two milligrams, two milligrams to 50 milligrams of THC. So you get to pick 
what you're putting in your body. You yeah. might want, you know, something low dosage. You might want something high dosage. Um, so these guys have you covered whether you're looking to microdose or enjoy more potent effects. Let the gummies work their magic. If you're 21 and up, check out the link to Via Hemp in our description and use the code cocktails to receive a little discount mm-hmm. and a free sample. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Okay. So back to you, Miss Candice. Okay. We didn't even let you say hi. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to hurry up and get through everything so like mm-hmm. we could like get to these topics. Okay. Yeah. So like Kiki and I said, we are very excited to have you here. We think that people should have a certain level of awareness when it comes to dating, especially marriage. But a lot of people are just skipping awareness and diving into marriage mm-hmm. and babies, mm-hmm. you know, out of <laughs> order. Um so I wanted to ask you, well, it's not even asked. We're basically this week, we're going to be talking about consulting with a divorce attorney before marriage and the advantages of that. Have you ever even had that happen? Have you ever had a couple that's thinking about getting married and they're like, before we get married, we want to talk to you? Yes. Um, I consult with couples, not as often as I thought I would, mm-hmm. but the ones who are thinking about marriage, usually they are engaged already, but they want to ask about a prenup. Oftentimes they have um, property that may be inherited, property that their parents have given to them, even though their parents are still living. And then a lot of times the parents themselves want to encourage their children to go and get a prenup. So I do talk to them about it. Judging from just basic conversations and, again, the comment section on a lot of things, I know that a lot of people don't really have a good grasp of what a prenup actually is. So could you explain to the to the audience on the internet what a prenup <laughs> is and what it isn't? Because I think that they think it means whoever decides to ask the other person for the prenup is telling you, if you cheat on me, if you leave me for whatever reason, you'll be living under a bridge. And that's not true. So tell everybody what a prenup actually is and what it isn't. So a prenup is a contract, basically. Mm -hmm. Usually it is um, executed prior to marriage. There are some windows. um, How long is a window in Georgia? I was going to say, I want to say it's between seven to like later. Generally, if you surprise someone. No, days. Oh, oh, okay. Um, Wait, I don't get it. What is the window and what is it for? I'm not explaining it well. Um, Let me see. Okay, so if you want someone to sign a prenup and you send it to them like the night before. Night before the wedding. Night before the wedding. It's probably almost like a little coerced because at this point, if I don't sign this, I have all these people coming tomorrow, Mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. Paid it, deposited. Exactly. So you want to do it within a reasonable reasonable (laughs) amount of time. So I think seven days is standard. I would recommend 30 and later. But um, 30 and earlier. 30 and earlier. Correct. 30 days before you get married. At least 30 days before you get married. Because after that gray area. After that, it is a gray mm-hmm. area about how informed and how much of a autonomy somebody has to really say no. Okay. So um, two things. I'll give it to you one at a time. Okay. Earlier, we were talking about Jeezy and Jenny Mai. And I saw something. Don't know if it's true or not. That part doesn't matter because this could probably come up in anybody's life. There was a prenup, allegedly, in that uh, marriage. And she came and said that, well... I didn't really have time to read it. Is that something that would fall in that window? And is there ever another situation where you could be like, well, I mean, I got the prenup, I signed the prenup, but I didn't really have time to read it. So, yes. Mm. Depending on what time she's saying, Mm -hmm. if she had a month or longer to read it and she just decided to read it the night before the wedding, that really won't count. The judge ain't fucking with that. No, Mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. Um, Other ways that a prenup can be invalidated, though, one, it has to be witnessed and it has to be signed in front of a notary. So if you're Mm. missing a witness. Or if it ain't signed, don't take it. You need to technically have two witnesses. So if you don't have two witnesses. Just because your mama stood over you. Exactly. While I read it. <laughs> That's the only thing I'll listen to y'all's parents when it comes to legalities. And get a professional. So, <laughs> that can invalidate it. Um, also, so with a prenup, you are supposed to fully disclose all of your assets. So if you don't fully disclose that you got this bank account over in the overseas and the prenup is executed and later that bank account or more is discovered, then you can possibly invalidate the prenup. Because at this point, 
we haven't really been fully informed about all the assets that we are negotiating and agreeing on now. And when mm -hmm. you say it invalidates the prenup, that means it's like, well, now none of that matters and I could possibly get half of everything that you didn't even want me to touch. Yeah. Do you happen to watch any of the Real Housewives of any city? So. <laughs> I love you, Kiki. <laughs> not There's a really. reason for this. And, and my answer, I, I hope I don't take us down another road, but I stopped watching all reality TV after loving hip hop because mm. I honestly started to hate men. And so okay, that's I was a like, good you know reason. what? I got to cut it off for your own. Okay. So there's a woman, her name is Sutton. She is on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That lady walked away with $300,000 a month. And I don't know if it's alimony, spousal support. What's the difference between alimony and spousal support? Nothing. Nothing just verbiage. Verbiage. Mm. Okay. So what might one do if they have decided, I'm getting older, work is not for me. I would like to Anna Nicole Smith the rest of my life, but without having a fight with his other kids. What are some things, some, maybe some words or phrases or language that you should look out for in the prenup that is definitely going to be presented to you? to look out for your best interest when this person dies or when things don't work out? Like, what are some things? I know I hear things about like fidelity clauses, getting a little bonus when you pop out a baby, even if your husband <laughs> is like 60 something years old and you're late 20s, early 30s, Ashley Darby on Potomac. That's where I get most of my divorce information because most people I know, they just stay in it when they shouldn't. So I'm, what I should have we, a question. What should you look for? To so benefit said, from whatever, benefit whoever's your, fault it is? Yeah, like if you're looking at your prenup, like, okay, you're not opposed to the prenup. You see mm -hmm. a prenup. What are some things that you should look for and look out for in language? Because sometimes I don't think people understand the terms. Okay. So you mentioned death. Are we, is a will at some point going to make its way across the- Let's hope they got a, what if they don't okay. have a will and you're married? Mm. So under the That's laws of Georgia, if you're not, if you don't have a will and you are married, then your spouse is next of kin, okay. meaning everything will go to the spouse. So if you have children who are not of your, um, your current wife or current husband, then you may want to have something else in your will that will provide for them as well. Because it's the wife that's gets like it. Anna. She gets everything. Mm -hmm. Spouse gets everything. Now, and that's without a will. So you Now, um, what if you were an older child like myself? And um, your daddy decided to marry some young hussy. <laughs> and you decide he wasn't right in the mind. Um, and she's fighting for what she feels is hers. But I want my piece of the pie, too, because daddy worked for me. What kind of stuff do you do? Like, what do you do to try and get anything? So they got divorced or daddy died? Daddy died. Daddy died. Okay. And he was married to this young girl. But I think daddy was crazy. And so I don't think any of it was right. So just like the prenup could be invalid, could could somebody do something to say the Can marriage you challenge is invalid? A will? And Nicole, that's what happened with her. Mm -hmm. The son that's what I'm saying, invalidated. But I mean in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> yes. No, you're you're fine. But yes, you can challenge a will. Mm. You basically would file. You would be what's called a caveator. And basically, you would be filing with the probate court to challenge the will. Is that expensive? Because I feel like sometimes people can't challenge things. They're like, dang, I only had enough money to try to do the I could only do one challenge. Battle. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge is that, does is it over. get more and more, more, more expensive? Like is it can. It doesn't have to. I mean, it's best to hire a lawyer for certain areas. But if you don't want to, then you save all those fees. I know some people it who depends. burn through some cash, and I'm like, you would have been better off had you just shut up and just taken your L. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The if the more assets win. you have to gain, then I would say maybe you want to hire a lawyer. Now, this might be a very weird question, but I do want to know. With the amount of divorces that you've handled here in Georgia, who normally has the most assets, men or women? <laughs> <laughs> it's about it's about even, honestly, it? because here in Georgia, you have a lot of beautiful black women who have money. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the, the saying is still true. It, it's cheaper to keep her. So I would say on average, maybe men, but women are steadily climbing. Who does the better job at protecting their assets? Mm. Women. Mm, that, I'm happy to hear that. I'm not I, surprised by that. I wasn't sure how it was <laughs> mm -hmm. going to go. I, I wasn't sure. Um, mm -hmm. 
Not that men don't, but women just do on a more regular basis. Probably because we see it happen so much and mm -hmm. we've been watching Lifetime since we were three. Mm -hmm. We know if you got something, protect yourself. What mm -hmm. have been the most common reasons for divorce that you've seen? Oh, um, okay. So if, if I can boil it down to two words, I would say unmet expectations. Mm. And that can seep into almost every area of your, of your life. Um, I had the expectation that you would be faithful to me. I had the expectation that you would not, you know, verbally abuse me, physically abuse me, financially abuse me. I had the expectation that you would contribute equally with our children, contribute equally with our household finances. I had the expectation that you would be a little bit more ambitious. Um, mm. A number of things, you know, mm. um, can creep out of, of what's called irreconcilable differences. So I always wondered what that was. I wanted to ask that too. Now, how do any of those things hold up in court? So irreconcilable differences is just sort of like a catch-all. Mm -hmm. You know, it could just be, well, you know, so-and-so blink too much. Um, <laughs> adultery. <would> me. <laughs> or <laughs> Not blinking too much. That's my excuse in court. This nigga blinking all the goddamn time. Just blink, blink, blink. Every time I turn around. Blink. But that's how easy it is to get divorced. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in, in Georgia, it's a no-fault state. Some states you have to have fault. Can you explain what, what that means mean? just for some of our listeners who might not know what no-fault means? And me, because I don't. So some of your fault-based grounds would be infidelity, would be cruel treatment, like someone is abusing someone. Um, irreconcilable differences doesn't really have a fault-based ground because it's really hard to say that someone was at fault. We just don't want to be together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so um, these fault-based states, is it the Deep South? Like South not Carolina? all the time. No? Mm -mm. So if you were in an at-fault state, like, what do you do in that instance? You just cheat for the rest of your life because you can't get out of your marriage? Did you say Georgia is an at-fault state? Or Georgia is not. Isn't. It's not, okay. But in those states, you would have to prove the fault. You know, a lot of times people will say that someone cheated on them, but you don't have proof. So in but those what if states, you can't in order to- prove it? Well, you probably can't get a divorce That's what I'm saying. So do you just have fault. to stay married? So maybe we should all Google if we live in an at-fault state and don't get your marriage license there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so oh, because so. imagine if your husband is cheating, but you don't have any proof, and you he's not stopping. So and you have get no on your spotty <laughs> senses and get a camera. But what if what if he's just that slick and you, you want just to can't be out? Get a divorce based on that particular fault. You mm -hmm. may have to look I'd at something else for everything. I know that men made these laws. They were like, out in there <laughs> that if, if they can't prove it, you can't. This bitch you can't stay leave here. It. It's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> yeah. Um. When somebody books a consultation with you, they're, they want to get a divorce. I'm assuming they don't come in together. You have to get separate <laughs> divorce attorneys. Yes. Are, is the first in Georgia. Unless, unless there is an agreement between the two of y'all and we're all good. Because a lot of times people we're say We're not going to fight. He's like, I'm gay. Like if you She's did like, the prenup, he's gay. He wants we're to be good. Mm -hmm. You did the prenup. We're coming back to you. Can we just execute She's the She's like, agreement? I know what I get. He mm -hmm. knows that he can. Yeah, so I can only represent one person, but generally, mm -hmm. if it's truly uncontested, I would want both parties to come in just so we can make sure that it's really uncontested. Because a lot of times people say that we have an agreement and then we really don't when they go back home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you, you thought about it and you talked to your friends. Mm -hmm. Dang, I have, now I have another, that made me think of another question. Ooh, <laughs> go ahead. But, but let me ask this one first so I don't um, forget, forget it. it. When someone does book a consultation, are you, are you like, all right, bitch, let's get to work? Or are you like, well, first, I want to give you some options to maybe, maybe y'all don't have to get a divorce. Maybe we can avoid divorce here. Do you, do, is is that kind of like a, a thing that's presented here in Georgia? Like we, we're going to suggest counseling first so that you don't just throw away your marriage or you're like, let's get it. No. Bye, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Um I will talk to people about what they did to try and reconcile. A lot of times... Clients who come to me for a consultation, they have gone to counseling already. They tried. I want, let me say this. So for anyone listening who is married, wants to get married, I want people to understand that conflict is normal in every relationship. Just because you have an argument does not mean you're getting divorced tomorrow. 
Just because you have an argument does not need mean you need to book a consultation with a divorce attorney. Mm. So a lot of times, I bet you've I had to tell people that before. Like, sis, go home. I need to be the last resort, um, and that's because I want to make sure that I have an argument. Because a lot of times when we're talking about division of assets and debt and things like that, the way the parties treat each other during the marriage directly affects the way property is divided. So the worse mm. of a person you are to me, the more of a percentage I can ask a judge for. So we generally really? start at 50%. But if you cheat on me, it goes up. If you kick me down the stairs, Amen. it goes up. And now we're looking at What about at emotional 80, abuse? Does that go up? Or is that hard to You've prove? It's harder to bitch. prove, but definitely make an argument for it. So if that's I have what a I'm recording listening for. In mm -hmm. our one recording side state, whatever you call it. Yes. Can, mm -hmm. Recordings can be played. Yes. Thank you, Alexa. <laughs> I have a question. Um, I had to write down a few. Now, um, abandonment. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work when you're trying to get an, a divorce, but this person has been, do you have to take on the expense of like a private attorney, uh, not private attorney, private investigator to find the person to serve them and go through all of that? Or is there any way where this person has disappeared off the face of the earth, a damn near a missing person? I want to move on with my life. The relationship is all already over what do i do so two 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 answers or two part answer mm -hmm. um abandonment has to be at least 12 months okay. so if we're on month 11 you can still file for divorce but you can't file for divorce based on abandonment but year seven i definitely can this man ain't came back to do no. nothing oh year seven year yes. seven yeah month seven but yes year Sorry, seven TV yes show. Um, <laughs> but, um, if you can't find the person, you can get, um, a divorce by publication. Basically we're serving the person by publication. It's, um, the notice is going to run in the whatever county newspaper. What about Instagram? Instagram would not, it um, would not count even though, even mm -hmm. if they're posting. So and if they're, they're posting, <laughs> well, the old verified people. <laughs> yeah. So if they're posting, they're probably going to want to find out if the person can be found, if they're mm -hmm. posting and they're posting like, um, you know, Hey, I'm here. And it's a picture of the lofts in the background. You probably can find this person. Um, you probably can skip trace the person. If you have a social security number, a date of birth, um, uh, former employers, a lot of things that but those things, is that with a private investigator has to find, or that's something that you're saying this. So you can, cause hire. I'm thinking about how much it costs because I know 29.95 for Spokio. And then I know, Private investigators cost a lot more. Yeah, so I'm not familiar. You said Spokio? Spokio is a website. If you're looking for somebody, go on there. <laughs> they will find everything. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, old Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I use um, a website called DocuSearch, and they do the same thing. They find that has assets more verifiable and all things. sorts of things. And Real documents. There is a fee. Um, it's anywhere from 30 to 300 but Did I would you ask try for that, that first. back in your divorce? Um, possibly. Like part of your legal fees. You, you need can to pay my legal for. fees. Mm -hmm. So if the person is like evading service, like you have reached out, excuse me, you've reached out to them, you see them online, you've, you know, sent messages, then yes. And then the last thing, I know you have something on the tip of your tongue. Something that has always confused me is common law marriage. And I've heard people say, oh, well, they're basically married or that's a common law marriage because it's been X amount of years. They act like man and wife. They say that they're man and wife, even though. You're getting mail here at the house. That we and they live that way, even though they've never actually gone to the courthouse, to the church or anything or filed any paperwork. I don't know if Georgia is one of those states, it's but not. I know that many are. Do you know what that really means? So Georgia doesn't recognize common law marriage. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what year it was when they stopped recognizing it. But basically, it's just people who have lived together for a long time. They may even have children. They may even have property together. Mm -hmm. But they just, for whatever reason, decided not to get married. And some states will still honor that length of commitment. But Georgia does not. But mm -hmm. whenever somebody is saying, well, we were married, because this would happen in a breakup. It's not a divorce since they didn't really get married. Or maybe like a death or mm -hmm. something. I'm just trying to figure out why would anybody even talk about a common law marriage? Because what does that mean? Is it like if somebody was to die, one of the adults dies that's in this common law marriage and they didn't have a will, this person isn't their actual wife, but would they try to say, well, we were common law married? Is that kind of where something like that comes into play? 
they can make that argument, but I don't think they will be very successful with it. Mm-hmm. Because with a will, you can leave money or property to anyone. You don't, It doesn't have to be your spouse. But I mean, no will. There's no nothing. So maybe you're not really married to this person, but this person has kids. Mm-hmm. They it don't talk to, the to them, don't check on them, have nothing to do with them. But you've been standing right beside them. So in that case, and hopefully... That might be why somebody would say, well, I was his common-law wife. Mm-hmm. We never actually got married. So that they have some sort of rights? No. No? Mm-mm. They wouldn't try it for that? I mean, you could try it. That's but what I'm just, saying. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out why somebody would try it. I yeah. know that it don't Because really they want up. to get those benefits. And mm-hmm. in that case, I feel like if someone is on their deathbed and, you know, they are, you know, just kind of declining, you know before that they're going to die. So either try and get them to find it. Have your affairs in will, order. Have your affairs That's in order. Said. Or if it's too um, too late to get a will because we have some mental incapacity issues, then you want to think about guardianship, like adult guardianship or adult conservatorship. Mm-hmm. And that way, basically, you get a court to recognize you as either the guardian or the conservator. That's what happened with Britney Spears. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Y'all read her culture. book to get the details <laughs> on our sis Brit. Uh-huh. Um, what are some reasons that, let's say, like, there's someone who wants to get a divorce and they come to consult with you i this has happened to someone that i know and the attorney wouldn't work with them but no one knew why what are some reasons that an attorney wouldn't take on a client lack of money <laughs> um <laughs> straight to the point lack Baby, of money. Pay my fee. let's say they have the money um so in law school we learned that the client is in control of the objectives and the attorney is in control of the means However, the objectives, in my opinion, still have to be agreed on. If you want me to do something that I know I cannot do or that I know won't be successful or you want me to make an argument that I think is total bullshit, Mm -hmm. then I will not take you on as a client. Because at this point, we're just going to have a very hostile relationship. And divorces can take years. Like you want to like the person that you're working with. with. Otherwise, I have Mm. no motivation to help you. Let's talk about debt. I recently posted a video on my Instagram page and I asked people, what are some questions you wish you would have asked or what are some things you wish you would have knew before you married whoever you married, whether you're divorced from them now or you're still married to them? A lot of women said they wish they would have knew a lot of family background from men and a lot of men said they wish they would have known the debt that the woman was in. How does debt work in a divorce? So Georgia is an equitable division state. What does that mean? You got to break it down. Some people can't read. (laughs) Just being so, honest. Equitable does not mean equal. Basically, we can have zero and 100 percentage divisions or we can have 50-50. So as far as debt is concerned, anything that you have prior to getting married is still your separate debt. I'm not responsible for it. So a lot of these student loans that you have in college generally do not become the His. responsibility. Is of there any way around your that? Can we work that into the prenup? <laughs> if he cheats bad enough, can you be like, Nick, you got Or if he says he wants to take care of me and quit everything, stop this silly podcast, marry me now. And if I will he take, says that, sure. And we but need do you have to have it in writing? Yeah, because what I want it on the it paper. Writing. I want it in the prenup. You said you're assuming my debt. Mm-hmm. That's it? Yeah. Okay, or, but Paul, so it clock? just needs to be in <laughs> we writing. Need to be clear. Yes. Okay. Y'all mm-hmm. hear that? Ladies. It needs to be specifically in writing be that specific. he's going it doesn't to need pay to be notarized. for your student loans. A prenuptial agreement does need to be notarized. Okay. And we got to do it 30 days or more before wedding day. Remember that. She said that in the beginning. Do you have any guidance on a prenuptial agreement that you could give to listeners? Get so one. let me tell you what can How to do be. it. Like, how do you go about <laughs> no, doing it? Because maybe like, you always have one. I was just joking. But. So custody, like if you have children or you plan on having children, that can never that be in a, next a prenup. Thing. You cannot. You can't put that in the. No. Um, so future custody, children or current children. You can or no list. Children. You can list current children. Okay. And you're basically listing them as the other partners. Future children, the judge is going to decide what happens, if, whether y'all agree or not. If it's in the best interest of the children, that's the standard um, mm-hmm. for whatever um, decision y'all in? come to. Yes. Okay. You can put pets in. But yeah, so custody will have to be excluded. But as far as oh. guidance, are you talking about certain things to include, how to 
mention it, how to talk about it. How to go about, I guess, mentioning putting it and to- including When I'm it. talking about putting together your prenup, what should people be protecting? Okay. Things that they might not think to. Obviously, you have land that is, you're an heir to something. Okay. Yes. But like, what are some things that people forget? And they're like, oh, shit. So I guess if I were doing it, knowing what I know now, and if I wasn't currently married. So I would try to first think about all the things that are not even subject to equitable division. Meaning it doesn't matter that you and I are getting married. This is mine and it will stay mine forever. So unless I give it away. So I would list those things. And then I would list what we currently have that is sort of mixed, but not necessarily, you know, ours just because we are not yet married. So like a house. Kind of. So if y'all live together and Mm -hmm. y'all are sharing bills and you decide that you want to do renovations and, you know, your fiance is a a, a brick worker or, you know, in masonry or he's just the the best handyman ever. And he starts doing all kinds of things, fixing up your house and he's contributing to the Mm -hmm. increase in equity, even though this is prior to the The marriage, marriage. once y'all get married. And if he continues to do those things, he can make an argument that even those mm-hmm. things he did prior to the marriage still have contributed. They he can value. take the house, basically. He can't take the house. But he can't he take the house. He has a claim on but something. But he has some a value. claim of equity in the house. Mm-hmm. What about interior decorating? So when you say interior if you decorating. you're selling the house with the furniture in it. So are or, we putting wallpaper up mm-hmm. or are we doing wainscoting, Walls, painting? Um, archways, uh, maybe redesigning the fireplace, like things that will stay, not a chair or a couch or a desk. So, yeah. Any money, any oh, fixtures. Similar? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say yes. Mm-hmm. Keep receipts. Now, with the with the pets, how does that work? Almost like children. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, who, who bought the pet? <laughs> She's like, I'm not a child. <laughs> <laughs> who bought the pet? Where the pet was purchased? Um, who does the majority of, you know, taking care of the pet? Like the court will look at all those things. Mm-hmm. Um, if children are involved and it's the children's pet, who's going to have the, um, you know, children time. primarily? Sometimes the pet can follow the children and go back and forth, things like that. What are the mm-hmm. main divorce laws in Georgia that people should pay attention to and know about? Mm. Get a little bit more specific. I don't know because I'm not married. Like, I, let's talk about Main child custody. Okay, so, well, Just me... things that maybe are not the typical things that people think of. You know how you hear these stories and it's like, oh, I didn't know North Carolina had this fidelity law mm-hmm. and the wife can sue the mistress, blah, 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 blah. Like we heard about that with Fantasia some years ago. Mm-hmm. And there's all those little laws that come into play sometimes when you hear about it in a big story. So is there anything in Georgia that comes to the top of your mind where it's like maybe you didn't realize that this is how it works in this state or any state that you know? Because the majority of our listeners are here, but we have people all over. Mm -hmm. Well, so with Georgia, things that people generally don't know. So you have to live here for six months at least six months in order to file for divorce here. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people don't know that. Um, Divorce has to generally be filed in the county where the defendant lives. So if you're the wife, you have to file in the county where the husband lives. Even if y'all have moved out separately, if he is in, you know, Cherokee County now, Mm -hmm. you have to file in Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. Um, You were talking about alimony. Um, So adultery, if it is the cause of the separation, is a complete bar to alimony for women. Well, really for men, too. Um, It's just generally women ask for alimony more than men. Um, So with child custody, there are about 17 things that a court will consider. Because a lot of times men say, oh, well, judges always give the children to the mom. The mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not always the case. While that is more common, it's not always the case. So one of the things that, so the standard is called best interest and best interest is very broad. But one of the things that a judge will look to is basically who has been the lead parent. So if the mom has been taking kids to doctors, you know, signing up for school, signing up for extracurricular activities, 
paying for everything, you know, just pretty much being the one doing the day to day, then yeah, that's going to continue. So if you are a dad and you're thinking about divorce and you're worried about paying child support, you might want to start getting a little bit more involved and get Mm. more involved with like something you can document just because y'all go to the park every weekend. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Do you know? This is not Fido. This is not a dog. It's your child. (laughs) Do you know the the baby's teacher's name? Did y'all see that video that was circulating around social media and it was showing? People thought it was funny, but it really wasn't funny. They were, strangers were walking up to families. It was a mom and a dad and the kids. And they were asking the dad all the questions that you would normally ask a mom. What's your favorite color? What's your best friend's name? What's your teacher's name? But not even stuff like that. But then also, what is your child's birthday? Oh, and yeah. the dads, almost all of the they dads got all of the answers wrong. And like, wow. it was, it was, everybody. The, They're like on a boardwalk somewhere. I know yeah, and the about. kids were like, dad, what? And it was yeah. like, well, okay, y'all better be paying attention. If you do want custody of your child, half y'all don't. So mm-hmm. they gonna skip past they just that part. Child support. Um, but yeah, so things like that. What is child support based on? Mm-hmm. So do child you support deal with that? All the time. Okay. Um, so what is it based on? Because a lot of the men get up in arms and they love to talk about having to go to jail if they lose their jobs. <laughs> and now all of a sudden they can't pay their $136 a month child support when they just left or lost their $250,000 a year <laughs> job. Um not that I know anything about that. I don't have my own children, but I see the stuff that the girls are going through and it pisses me off and I'm a warrior for them. So what is it based on? So child support- And how can we shut them up? It's based on gross income. A lot of times people want to, you know, say, oh, well, my bonuses are not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. So um, if you get it, it can be included in child support the worksheet as income. So it's based Gross, on, not net. Because those are two different not, things. Right? Net correct. is more though, right? Net yeah. is what you actually get to take home. Net, net is your take yeah. home. So net. they're basing off of gross. Right. It's before, before taxes. the taxes. Before, so okay. if, if you have some debt and they say that they're going to garnish your check, we don't, child support don't care that your check is garnished because of your furniture debt from mm-hmm. Renaissance Center when you didn't pay that <laughs> for that bed. You still got to figure this out. Okay. Got it. So go ahead. So child support is based on gross monthly income um, and it's calculated with a worksheet. A lot of times people think we're pulling numbers out of our head. No, all of these numbers go into worksheet. Um, It's some kind of algorithm based on the legislature, the people downtown. And it's too low. So I don't know who your friends are. Tell them to call me. They're not my friends. Okay. (laughs) There are people I know, so, so I've had sound, a job you got some where, clients for me. where yeah, I see so, what people no. are paying, and so I'm just like, how is this what the judge came up with? Somebody lying somewhere. Um, they and then also, money child support too many kids. can be modified every two years. Um, mm, two. And Y'all hear this? You ladies, don't even have to wait men? the two years if there is what's called a material change in circumstances. So... Yeah, make sure we're calculating income correctly. So if he's trying to be a rapper, his mixtape really wasn't hitting, and then all of a sudden he gets signed with Clive Davis, and he is a billionaire. And we see yeah, on whoop. the shade room, right you back. got a $50 million contract, and you on the yachts with the bad bitches. Oh, bitch, I'm coming for you. Yep. So we're just, I know right you don't know this, like to, like, to the T, but, like, I was thinking about Tori Hart and Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. How much do you think she was getting in child support? <laughs> Because she was with him when he didn't have nothing. And then obviously- they have three kids. They have two kids. Two kids. Mm-hmm. And they're just now, one of them just went to college and one is about to go to college. But he got he got on when they were kids. So with Georgia, we have the worksheet and then we have deviations. One is a high income deviation and one is a low income deviation. I would say roughly anywhere. And Georgia is a state that is notoriously low for celebrities. California is like one of the highest- but possibly anywhere from five to maybe twenty thousand dollars a month. It's mm, a big gap based on that high income deviation. Mm-hmm. And that when in lot. divorce, when people about, have kids and they have to do the whole like you have to keep up with the lifestyle that the child had, how does that really work? <laughs> how is that fair? And I'm not. I I don't disagree with it. But like, how is that fair? Well, it's That's fair. That the child. Because mm. you, right, the best interest of the child, they do want the children to have as mo- as much stability as they generally could have in a mm-hmm. two-parent home. So if you go to one house 
and you know it's lavish, it's luxurious. They want to try you have a to nanny make the of other a theater. One. You drink Pellegrino. Uh huh. You cannot a, go to the projects right. with the roaches. Exactly. You know how to be in another mansion, but mm -hmm. come on now. So I guess that's the fairness mm -hmm. of it. Do you ask? Do they actually sit the kids down and be like, "What are you used to"? No, generally the attorneys or the parents will make those arguments. Okay. Oh, I thought she was waving. She was waving at me. I have What's more that? questions, but I go wanted ahead. to make no, sure I didn't ahead, take have, away from you. Like two more, but you go first. Okay. So, but I will say this though. Oh, what? When you are fourteen and older, you can choose which parent you want to live with. Could you imagine in any your child state or being Georgia? Like, I want Georgia. Okay, I I'm only specific. barred in Georgia, so I don't oh, know. Okay, Could you okay. imagine your child, like you get divorced from a billionaire and like you think your child has your back and you about, you think you about to also get like what you can get because like he needs to keep it. And she's like, I want to live with daddy. <gasps> you know what? Honestly, I would have to bite that bullet and be like, I raised her right. Because no, baby, go to the better side. If it's going to be better, better if it's no. going to be better. Well, I'm going to write because, the child a letter and be like, please don't do this Because if he's not me. taking care of me and I haven't been working and now I'm just fighting in divorce court for the next 10 mm -hmm. years and you're in college. Baby, like, you better. Come do. on. Do you know what your dad did to me? Do you know what he did? He probably, we probably shouldn't have got married in the first place. I mean, place. you're a I should have been as a therapist and I should have been doing absolutely crazy. He going to pay for the nanny. Maria coming over here. Stop. You got to come. I now swear see, to God, see. we've been doing this gentle parent. I will bush upside your head. Mm -mm, mm -mm. How are the child custody and visitations uh, typically determined in this jurisdiction? So what's standard is generally the non-custodial parent will get like every other weekend. We have seen judges do a little bit more than the every other weekend. Like they'll do first, third, and fifth weekends. There are what the heck is a, that? Yeah, I was gonna say, like every First started year. This. Do we even always have? <laughs> you a really gotta have calendar no. invites. Exactly. It's like about four months. That's a that lazy have a, dad a fifth thing. weekend. Mm. But they're trying to give dads more time. Um, I've seen different variations of the weekend. Like sometimes it may start on Thursday and go through Sunday or if Friday through Monday. No, you don't necessarily have to live close. Um, you probably won't do. The Friday through Monday or Thursday through Sunday, if you're not able to get the kids to school on time, because that's what I'm thinking about when I think about living close. Right. Like, are you close enough to be able to get them exactly to their regular? Right. Um, we generally split the summers. I've seen a lot of week on week off. Judges are moving a little bit away from that just because the week on week off costs a lot of just riff raff with oh I pay for summer camp and then during your weeks you're not taking them to summer camp but I still got to pay for the week. So mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of splitting the month. Dads will generally get June since Father's Day always occurs in June. Mm, that's um, nice of y'all. Mom will get July and then kind of go through the, you know, beginning of the school year, things like that. And what happens time. if people miss those dates? Like what if like some people are can, being petty? I'm pretty them? sure you've seen like some petty stuff. And it's like the mom knows like it's Father's Day in the June. He, the baby is supposed to go in June. She's mm -hmm. like, and yeah, once well, again, you're we're on the south of France with my new husband. Or I'm here waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And so is your child. They think they're coming and you cancel last minute. So that is a because I know you're not change. like family law mm -hmm. dealing with custody, but you do deal with custody. So I am a family law. Attorney. Oh, you are. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, that would qualify as a material change in circumstances, and it is mm -hmm. one reason to increase child support because the judge is not going to make you spend time with your kids if you don't want to. They're not going to make you. But so if I'm incurring, those. well, no. So that's property and debt division. Oh. Um. But if I'm incurring additional expenses because the children are always with me when they should be with you, then I need more child support. But what you could do is also, um, you know, ask to modify visitation and decrease it so that, you know, you won't be in contempt when, you know, they decide that they want to exercise their summer visitation. But for the past five summers, they haven't. And you've so already you made, made plans. plans. Exactly. So when you're in contempt, what does that actually mean? So basically, contempt means that there is a court order and you willfully violated the order. Willfulness is the key. Like if you're supposed to pay child support, you're supposed to pay $500 a month and you lose your job through no fault of your own and you can't pay the $500 a month, you're probably not in willful contempt. You still owe the money, but you're not in willful contempt. So there's something that you could do to let the courts know, hey, I'm unemployed right now. This exactly. is why I'm not paying. Instead of the men who keep crying mm -hmm. about 
Yeah, it's smart at that point to modify the child support. Mm -hmm. Men and women both can modify upwardly or downwardly. Are there fees attached to that if you're modifying it downwardly? So no, no fees. I mean, you have to pay the filing fee, right? Everyone has to get paid, but you don't have to hire a lawyer. Um, You can just file the fee with the court to say, uh hey, I need to lower my child support. Mm -hmm. I have lost my job Mm -hmm. until something changes. Basically. Now, let's say it's the inverse of that. and You're getting child support as the the mother and you, you know you are an entrepreneur and now you are the Beyonce of the relationship mm-hmm. does he have to keep paying child support mm-hmm. so child support follows custody if you have custody then yes he generally has to keep paying child support and can you explain to some of the men out there that sometimes we see tweet and put in our comments like I want to see my baby but I can't she's keeping him from me or she and it's like but you can you actually what are the men's rights Let's say the the rights do go to the mom. Mm-hmm. Can you let some of the men know? Because they don't seem to know that you can get on Google and talk to a divorce attorney and understand that you actually have rights to your children as well. What are their rights? Are they the same as the mother's? So were they married? They're married. Okay. So if they are married, then yes. So generally, if we have a divorce, there's going to be a parenting plan attached mm-hmm. or incorporated and you follow that parenting plan. And if the mother is not following it and she has a valid reason for not following it, say you went to jail or, you know, you got whatever, um, then you file a contempt action. You take so her back to court. it's not safe for the kids to be with him. Exactly. Um, you take the mother back to court and say, judge, I have missed X amount of days. I need makeup time. Um, another remedy could be attorney's fees. If you hired an attorney, the mom who is in violation of the court order could, you know, be forced to pay the attorney's fees. And then also if it's repeated, this doesn't happen all the time, but it does. Women can get locked up for withholding parenting time. Mm-hmm. What if they're not married? Well, mm. then file. So if you have a child and you are not married as a man in Georgia, you have no rights to that child. I know. I didn't now, know that. I'm not going to. I didn't know that. Okay. So what is the big fuss? I did not know okay, that. Again, we don't have children, so we don't know. We'd like some clarity. What is the big fuss with the name on the birth certificate whole thing? And uh, legitimizing a child. That's what you have to do. So, so what and what does that exactly mean? So name on the birth certificate doesn't really legitimate old? the child. Okay. It's not all. It actually helps the mother because a lot of times you can't leave the state. But mm, maybe you can. I, I wouldn't um. I wouldn't say that you couldn't leave the state, but you can't contest paternity. At that point. So mm. say. So you can't you know, say this is not even this his is daddy. Exactly. I was because at that point really. you have held yourself like, out. Why censor to myself be the like father. she has a real baby? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You've held yourself out to be the father. And even if it's proven biologically that you are not the child. Like if father, they take the DNA test and it's somebody else, but you signed the birth certificate. But you, you signed still, the birth certificate. You, still on you the hook? held yourself out to be the father. You were still on the hook. So you have For to child, pay child support, support and everything. That is so ghetto. I love it. But it's so ghetto. Like, <laughs> don't y'all sign these child support? I mean, but these are really conversations people need to no be way. having because it's like there are a lot of people having babies and getting married and you don't know who the fuck you doing, what you doing with. Mm-mm. Okay, but back to legitimizing the child. Mm-hmm. Why would a man say, oh, I want to legitimize this child when they know it's their child? Maybe they're on the birth certificate. What is... What does legitimizing them in the state of Georgia actually do? What rights is that giving it that gives person? You legal and what rights. is the process? So legitimation is the way to actually get the legal rights to your child. And but what is it exactly? So that would be the right to actually see the child, basically, meaning a court will enforce my right to spend time with my child. A court will give you the right to receive um medical records, school report cards. Um, When it's time to go out of the country, you have to sign the passport. If you don't legitimate, then you don't have to sign the passport. Mom can get the passport and kudos without you. Um, But what what are you doing when you're legitimizing? So you file what's called a petition for legitimation with the court, basically saying, hey, I had this child. I'm not contesting paternity or I do want a paternity test. Some Mm. judges will make you get one, some won't. Um, and basically say, I want X, Y, you know, X, Y, Z rights to my child. You can even ask for primary physical custody if the mom is somewhere on drugs somewhere. Mm. Um, and you basically say, I have either been taking care of this child 
or we were living together, we broke up, and now, you know, she's acting crazy. She won't let me see the child. So I need a court to physically help me get these rights. So with that, there is a um, what's called the abandonment of your opportunity interest. So you can file for legitimation until you can't, right? If it's been five, six, seven years and you haven't seen the child, you haven't spoken to the child, you haven't paid any kind of child support, then if you file a petition for legitimation, a court probably will not grant it. Mm. Can you file for, I wish I never even told anybody this was my baby daddy, <laughs> illegitimation? <laughs> No, you no. can you can file to terminate rights though. You can okay. petition to terminate parental rights. Okay, so hmm. uh, before we move on to indecisive Diane, um, I do have a few more questions just about like assets and that whole thing. So let's say you get married, you don't have a prenup. Somebody mm. writes a book, you become a New York Times bestselling author. Scandalous! Oh, you're like <laughs> a op you're like a Oprah. You in Oprah's book club? Like you're making bank now. Doesn't go right. Four years later, three, y'all get a divorce. Mm -mm. How y'all don't have kids. Wait, how is that split up when it's like you don't have kids? We don't have to take care of anybody. We're both able bodied persons and, you know, you're doing OK for yourself. I'm doing better than you. But like he just wants to be petty or she just wants to be petty and just take what they can get. They're going to get something. That's a question. Possibly. Possibly. your attorney. Mm. Possibly just So because. what are the ways That people can Protect their Finances Essentially So trusts Are a way To get things Out of your name mm -hmm. um, You could put Something Or the, the funds Or maybe even The book itself In a trust You could establish A company That you own With two or three Other people And so that way Technically we're only we're, We are reducing Your share mm. Um that's another way. We could have a postnuptial agreement that you mentioned, but basically saying this is my, you know, this will be considered my separate property or it won't be con or subject to equitable division. But generally anything incurred or acquired during the marriage is usually um, subject to division, especially if your wife or your husband contributed to your success but in that book. Now let's take and, and make it a little bit more personal. That. We have this podcast. We've been doing this podcast well before either one of us had a nigga or a man, a young man, <laughs> a, a man of God. And let's say all of a sudden. Interesting word choice. <laughs> <laughs> we blow up to the point where like we get a, I don't know. We're signing hundred like million network. dollar deal. We're like getting a million. Yeah. Deal, right? And like Kiki gets married. TV show. Then she gets divorced. Can he take what we have? Or Hell he can't no. take what we have. Because I can call Candace already. <laughs> <laughs> he can't, so we, there's no prenup in, but while but we this weren't is still separate, so this would still be yours because she started it before this is, he this came into the to picture. Do with him. Your name on all this shit. It said Kiara Walker, mm -hmm. not Kiara Fox. Rick yes. Fox is my celebrity. Now I would fresh. just be a little little leery now if he start one to invest. Uh uh. Um, you know, at that well, point. Well, Rick hasn't wow. asked me to but invest, but that's a good thing to make that sure that people point. know that. So if he was like, hey. Staking I'm going to sponsor this like year. Like the painter. Exactly. So if he's like and the interior decorator and the the man who was doing right. the masonry. If he's if like, he, I'm going to sponsor like a year's worth of y'all's episodes, then now he maybe could claim a stake guess. in something. Mm -hmm. And you watch out for men like that. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do, like if he's someone who is really connected and y'all have a business entity, hire him or pay him at that time. Make mm -hmm. him a, a 1099 or a contract worker and say, look, this a is what I'm person. giving. Exactly. It's the He's the but that's what Mary J. Blige for, did, and she had a horrible well, he divorce. Was, he was her manager, not a salesperson, and also uh, her husband. Mm -hmm. What are you? He what? was a friend. Of mine. <laughs> yeah, Mary. I oh, that's that how her. the alimony part came in. Mm -hmm. That I with, just feel like his, his. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to ask. Uh, we got away from child support just a teeny bit. Mm -hmm. When you marry somebody. Who already has children. Mm, and you got money. And your income, whether you have money or not, your income could be factored into the child support. No? That's no. what she said. Or is it just Georgia? So with Georgia, okay. um, child support specific. is calculated by the parents' gross income. Only DNA. Only the parents. Oof, now, God. the spouse's income will come into play if there was a contempt action. Say you... 
or so again, our, our little example, you're paying $500 in child support. Mm -hmm. You get behind, but now you're married and say you spent this, you know, thousands of dollar, you dollars bought a house on this wedding. Y'all bought wife. a house. Now y'all are splitting expenses. You have help, financial help. You know, there's a two income household. So then that wife's income may come into play it's as like, far why as pay this. Right. You have the hmm. ability to pay this. So I'm so willfully, you know, I'm basically going to hold you in willful contempt because you could have paid it mm -hmm. or you could have borrowed it from her. That makes sense. But as far as calculation, best interest of the child. Right. As far why as calculation, though, mm -hmm. if you get married and you guys are in real estate, let's say you purchase seven homes. Do you split them equally if mm -hmm. you get a divorce? If you buy the houses I mean, while you're you together, are, you my can. natural reaction. What is the petty version of it? Because I feel like a lot of, <laughs> I just feel like that's what divorce comes down to. It's like, who gets the the majority of the things if there was no prenup in place? Are we just split? It's just like, it doesn't matter who did what. And when you say what. you bought a house together, is it all about dollars and cents? Or is it like, okay, well, maybe you put up all of the like cash money, but who was talking to the people who was sitting there at the appointments, who was doing all of the other things that mm -hmm. you were unavailable for that so, helped make the deal go through? We're tell really talking like we got a divorce <laughs> on the line, but we need to know. So tell we can me. call you when we're ready to be like, okay, it's time to split. Well, hopefully we don't have to call yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not right. going to be calling yes. you, Candice, unless we go on a branch. <laughs> yes, let's go to branch. Now, I also branch, do business but, law, just letting y'all know I do trademarks. Okay. We need to get cocktails trademarked. But anyway... Okay, so do we have debt on the house? Yes. Okay. Let's say we have some student loan debt. Let's say no the um, mortgage. Let's huh? Is the house paid off? Uh, no, it's not. Okay. We, so we, no. if the house mm -hmm. is not paid off, <laughs> what well, law was you about to tell? <laughs> I was about to say, you sound like you in the court the meeting with you. I was about to tell more details, but no, no mortgage. So two things: the court is going to look for basically the way y'all treated each other. You know, if there is no real glaring examples of misconduct. So if then, he was cheating, yes. he's going to probably lose here. Yes. He was cheating with a mistress, one of these Instagram big booty hoes, <laughs> and he did it all over the internet. Because he did it in all over the house. internet. In that house, in my bed, while my niece and nephew were downstairs, and he was supposed to be watching them while I went to get groceries. <laughs> okay. Brioche All of that bread. is like compounding on it to make it worse, so, right? Let me just ask you this. You keep a receipt. <laughs> okay. Does it behoove what? people who are being cheated on to kind of kind of wait it out a little bit and get all the evidence you can get if you need a little bit more in the divorce? You can get what I'm saying. <laughs> I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you, can you wait it out, out a little bit? Wait it a while. You wouldn't say that. <laughs> can you wait a little bit? If you have been going through some shit for a long time and it takes you a long time to really get, get the, the strength, evidence, oh, the strength to muster up and leave this horrible situation that has caused you PTSD. So you, I, so you I are say stressed. This. A lot of times, at least for mm. my clients, People think infidelity is like the number one cause for divorce. It's not. It's money. I would say it's money. I would say I would it's just money I'm, I'm tired. So a lot of times that, that first time cheating, people overlook that. Or I mean, they don't overlook it. They don't condone it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people move they past it. They think it'll it. be fixed. They hope it will be fixed. Mm -hmm. um, repeated cheating, then yeah. But usually the more times we have, it's easier to prove. And then honestly... You only need to prove something if someone is going to lie about it. Like if you cheating and you know you cheating, just say you cheating. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't really have much property together and we don't have any kids, it's not like it's going to, you know. Maybe but if you have thousand dollars to our name, what are we even fighting about? But if you have right. a lot to lose, basically what you're saying is if you, if have, you have a lot, lot to, lose, to lose, you should probably yeah. go into whatever marriage you are thinking about going into very honest and let them know, I don't think I can be faithful. Yeah. And yeah. make that prenup accordingly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what I think. And in and any relationship, whether you're getting married or not, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to be honest. Well, whether you're getting married or not, that is true. But when it gets to the point where it's like, I can take your shit, you mm -hmm. might really want to handle this in a different way. Because well, I'm saying whether you're getting married or not, because you can still have other agreements in place. Like, let's say you buy this house together. You buy these things together. You do these things together. And... Something could cause somebody to be like, okay, well, we need to sell this and split it. But at or least you get the whatever. fairness of like, we're not married. This isn't by law. We get to split it. Mm -hmm. I can take your stuff 
And we're talking about if a prenup is in place. If a prenup isn't in place, yeah, somebody prenup, can still post-nup. somebody can still take what agreement. was passed down to you, mm-hmm. right? Like people can take somebody's property. Law. So if something That's is what passed I was down about. to you, it's inheritance, and inheritance is separate property unless you commingle it. What How is commingling me? Because I know <laughs> family members that have got their shit snatched. So let's just say we have a big life insurance policy. Grandma leaves us $100,000. Okay. Put that $100,000 in an account. Don't put it in an account with your man. Right. Put it in okay. a separate account with your name on it only um, just to basically shield it and protect it. Now, if you take $100,000 all of that money and you buy a house and then you put both names on it, you have then commingled that money. It is now a mixed asset. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Under the Tuscan Sun? With um What's no. That? It's a, a it's an old movie in from the 80s. It has uh, she's a really well known actress. I can't remember her name, but basically she was married. She had an amazing marriage. She was an author and the husband wanted to divorce her. She was passed down a house. It was a family house. He ended up taking her house. They didn't go into the details of how he got the house, but he got the house. He married a new bitch and they lived in the house together. Wow. And she had to she had to he got the house. And I was I'll like, damn. Goddamn. He wasn't a contract like he wasn't a he wasn't building stuff in the house and mm-hmm. are there ways that somebody can really take your property that was passed down to you from your family I, she have I guess in certain states she didn't and he was cheating mm. so he had a good ass attorney I, I would, right had, i was gonna uh, say i would a love mouthpiece to hear that argument but yeah i would imagine yes i mean just about everything is possible but it would be really 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 hard unless there were some extenuating circumstances in place Okay. I just don't see that happening just for random stuff. I hope you guys heard that because uh, we're going to move on. But before we, again, I keep saying, before we go to Indecisive Man, this is just another really great question because a lot of scamming mm. happens in Atlanta. This is home what, of the scammers. Because we haven't really talked about divorce in that essence. Like, let's you say mean? you're dating someone. You do think he has his life together. Uh, now y'all about to get a divorce and you realize everything was a scam. That oh. business he owned, he yeah, don't own it. How do you it. separate yourself when you Are feel, you going to jail? Do you have to contact the FBI and let them know? This, motherfuck- to do with this, this motherfucker is not real. And you have to let them know <laughs> that I didn't know shit he, he had going on. I like, wanna- yeah, what if you get wind? What he do you scam, do? Your husband's scamming. You want to leave him, but you don't want to do the time that you might. Because I wasn't in on it, and I still have a fake Chanel bag. I just found out it's DH gate. <laughs> and you think you're going to jail. All of this is a scam. You, Everyone's like, there's I no way you didn't know. Does. Bitch, you knew, but saying. you really didn't know what was going on here. He got mm-hmm. that PPE. What was it? A PPP? A P- PPP yep. loan? He got some mess that he shouldn't have got because he don't have no business. <laughs> but he business. got it, and y'all was splitting all business. the stuff. <laughs> Are you going He's to jail? He's still screaming, standing on business. Like, what's going on? It. Am I going to jail? <laughs> and how can I divorce him? And not go to jail and still go. get what he made, even though it wasn't real. Well, so we when gotta we say to- jail, we're kind of like creeping into the criminal law yeah. world. But I, just I don't know, know Sorry, as much. Yeah. No, you're fine. I don't know as much, but I would want to say the intent has to be there. And so, if you generally, truly did not know, <laughs> you're then good. You may not be good, um, but you may not be as bad. Um, because okay. uh, you may still be some kind of accessory, but I will <gasps> file for divorce. Not a bracelet. As soon as you find out he's scamming in a real way. Yeah. I would go ahead and start trying to separate as much as possible because there is a possibility that you could, you know, be in jail or be financially on the hook or, or, or worse. Why don't you have an Uber account anymore? I would have questions. Why can't you get cash app? Mm-hmm. I don't even use that anymore. But why don't you have it? <laughs> I mean, what have you been up to? <laughs> y'all better. Y'all think these scammers are cute and funny. So you You're locked over up right there. Yeah. alone. Those days are done. We ran it up. Ooh, all right. I think we have we have we have way more questions actually, but we won't do that Ooh. to you right now. We're gonna move <laughs> on to indecisive Diana. When we come back, we do have an advice letter that we're gonna read, and um, then we'll move on to cocktails. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? Hey ladies, it's me, Diane, coming to you with a fresh new date idea for all my ATLians. So listen, do you like Shakespeare? No? (laughs) 
will learn to. They have a Shakespearean tavern playhouse downtown in Atlanta. Google it, you can have dinner in the theater while watching a little bit of old fashioned Shakespeare being acted out. Try it out, tell me how you like it, bye. Did y'all know that a woman is 80% more likely to orgasm when we use a personal lubricant? I mean, it makes per perfect sense. The more turned on you are, mm -hmm. the wetter your body may be. And sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So having some lube on hand is great. Now, our sponsor, Pure, wants you to indulge in European luxury. Incorporate Pure Infinity to your sexual wellness routine and dive into pleasure. The amazing thing about this premium lube that I have right here mm -hmm. is that it's a luxury everyone can afford. And it delivers immediate benefits you can feel, aka pleasure. Pure Infinity silicone based lubricant is ideal for sensual massage or any kind of penetrative sex or foreplay since it's long lasting, never sticky, and best of all, efficient. A little bit goes a long way. It comes out just like this. I love the way the bottle looks. I am mm -hmm. very much into beautiful things and I love how the bottle looks. <laughs> yeah, me too. And it does feel good. I'm smoothing it on. Ooh, my hand is a little ashy. Um, <laughs> I tried it out. And what I like about the um, the Infinity, this one is the silicone-based one. So the silicone-based mm -hmm. one is their premium gel formula. And it's mm -hmm. made without pre preservatives. And it's um, pH neutral. So that's really important because you don't want to be throwing things off. And I also find that sometimes um, some lubes may have like a scent mm -hmm. and this one does not. So I like that too, because all scents are not going to match with your own natural scent. It just, it feels good. And sometimes, you know, I know everybody loves to say, how they don't need any assistance, but sometimes you want a little quickie and you might not get warmed up quick enough and you have your little lube right there and you can just get it popping immediately. Or sometimes you might be a little dehydrated mm -hmm. and you need you some help. Know. There's lots of things that can happen. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. And right now, Pure is offering our listeners 5% off your order with our code COCKTAILS, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. Or you can go to cocktailspodcast.com, click Pure and use code cocktails for 5% off. That's pure, P-J-U-R. They spell it differently. I love different. And use code cocktails. Please support our show by using the link in our episode description. That's cocktailspodcast.com. guys so thank you so much for listening we are back from indecisive diane it's time for the advice if you have an advice letter that you would like us to answer on the show please email us advice at cocktailspod.com are you gonna read it i'll read it okay i'm gonna tinkle to the bathroom but okay. you go ahead okay candace so what we do every week is we read an advice letter and then we try to help the listener that sent the advice with whatever we can help them with. Um, this one is titled, and you never know, I didn't proofread this, so you okay. never know <laughs> how this is gonna go. This one is titled, A Freak That Is Waiting. Hey, Medina and Kiki. First off, I wanna say I love y'all. Thank you ladies for creating a safe space where we are even able to talk about sex and sexual experiences as black women. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. I'm currently 26 and I lost my virginity at 22. I like sex, but I've always attached sex to being in a relationship where I can trust the person. With that being said, I've had very few sexual partners and haven't done and haven't done it a lot. I haven't had sex for over a year. As I get older, I do want to be able to please my man. When he comes uh, when he comes, oh, when he comes, child, because uh, <laughs> as we know, Atlanta is ghetto. And with the lack of experience, it makes me feel insecure in that area. The crazy thing is I'm attractive, curvy, independent, and getting men, 
has never been an issue. I just never let it get too far. So what should I do? Should I look for a friend with benefits and be honest that I'm not experienced? Should I do the dating apps for that and put it in my bio? Question mark. Should I try to meet guys in person and then tell them I'm looking for fun, but need help with the fun? Men never believe that I'm unexperienced because I don't look like it. So I never really get to talk about it with them. Help, I really want to be the girl that takes over in the bedroom and feels as confident there as I am in every other aspect of my life. Signed, a freak that is waiting to be unleashed. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Any advice, Candice? So I don't know about the friends with benefits thing. Mm -hmm. Um, My advice Anytime I want to learn something new, I do the same thing. I watch something, so maybe she needs to watch some pornos. Um, I listen. Maybe she needs to listen to some podcasts about sex specifically and positions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe she needs to get a good book, you know, and read about some different things. And maybe she needs to get like a, a friend who is more experienced and talk some things out, maybe even like act some things out without necessarily having sex Mm -hmm. but I would also encourage her to think about other forms of intimacy Um, especially if you're in a relationship she sounds like she's 26 so maybe she's looking for marriage you don't want to feel like that's the only thing you bring to the table and when you get into the safety of that relationship Mm -hmm. and the vulnerability talk to your partner and basically ask him what do you like show me how to do it you know and that way you learn in the safety net of this particular person, because as we already talked about, you don't want a bunch of children with a bunch of people that you really don't know, mm-hmm. don't know their finance, um, financial circumstances. And then also you would want to make sure that you're being healthy. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't encourage her to just go, you know, out looking for fun, mm-hmm. but I would encourage her to learn in more conservative ways. And then when she is in a relationship, explore within that safety net. Yeah, I think we get a lot of emails about like, how can you explore your sexuality and have fun? Um, And I really think that get to know yourself. I know that sounds, y'all, we sound old when we say it. I know it, especially if you go back to some of the earlier episodes of cocktails. That's the only way that it Mm -hmm. can work out for you. You don't even know what you want yet. And just Mm -hmm. like last week when we had Michaela on, she talked about how like, Act out what you want done to you on on your partner. It doesn't have to be someone you're in a relationship with. If you know you're looking for fun, you know what you're looking for. We don't know you. Act out what the next person that you get a chance to do that with. It doesn't have to be sex. It could be like mm-hmm. how you want somebody to talk to you, mm-hmm. how you want somebody to buy you a drink, how you want somebody to treat you. You act it out and see if you're comfortable with it. Because I really don't think that in the law of attraction, you can really get what you want if you're not representing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I think that... Um, As you're trying to figure yourself out and figure out what you want, what you like, all of those things, you, like you said, it sounds cliche to be like, oh, you got to figure out what you want, but you do. Because Mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we've shared about our younger years, we didn't know what we wanted. We were trying to figure it out. And it showed in the cocktails. We were kissing toes, (laughs) kissing frogs, kissing bunions, kissing bullshit, kissing all sorts of things that we didn't have to kiss if we had taken the time to say, hey, let's figure out what we actually want, what we actually like. Who am I? Work on that. And then wants can change. Mm -hmm. And they can and be open to that process. Exactly. Ten years ago, I don't want today. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way, yeah. Girl, Mm -hmm. so let us know how it goes. Really put it into practice. Don't be scared. Even if you are scared, fight through the scared because it'll be worth it. I promise you it will. Again, go back to our cocktails. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Go to the and then listen now. It's very different and nothing's wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Life is about growth. Okay, so that's it for the advice. If you have an advice letter, remember, email us at viceacocktailspod.com. And now it's time for the cocktails. Once upon a time, not long ago, I was a ho, 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 
No, I feel oh. really bad because I what? didn't tell Co Candace what the cocktails were. I don't oh. know if when we talked, did I you tell you about the, the cocktails? cocktails. Ooh. So at the end of every episode each week, we do what is called a cocktail. And that's basically like a story that is shared either from Kiki, me, or we'll read one from a listener. And a cocktail is basically a personal story pertaining to yourself about dating, sex, or relationships. It can be from the past. It can be current. It can be embarrassing. It can be funny. It's basically <laughs> just like a story about dating, sex, or relationships that's story worthy. Something that you've told your girlfriend. Some sort of experience. Yeah. And, and they're like, uh-uh, girl. Or they're like, uh-uh, girl. It could be funny relatable or not relatable. And so what we like to do here on cocktails, and I hate to put you on the spot, is <laughs> tell a story. Mm -hmm. Tell a story. And I would tell you to read, because normally I'm like, or you could read one, but this one is titled Head, Head, and Mo Head. Okay. And I don't or you think. could give us an experience that somebody else had. No names True. required. No names are required in any of these stories. So it could mm -hmm. be from anybody. I love when we get professionals on here and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, shit. <laughs> 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 okay, so I have, I have a question. Okay. So the story can be about like me and my husband? Mm -hmm. It can be. Okay. Or yeah. before your husband. Okay. And it has to be about relationships, sex, sex or a date. Relationships, sex, or a date. Or it could be anything. Relationships, sex, or Really date. anything that involves coupling, you know? Yeah, maybe one time you got real drunk and had a girl-on-girl -girl experience. Mm -hmm. Or maybe one mm -hmm. time you got drunk and you hit him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could be anything. Or maybe one time you got drunk, you thought you hit him and you woke up and you apologized and he was like, baby, that was a dream. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> or maybe you, you, when you were dating, you, I forgot, but something crazy. Mm -hmm. So we did not have sex on our wedding night. <gasps> okay. We got to hear this story. This is the perfect one. Okay. You got the, you got the. Uh, thing. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, neither of us were virgins when we got married. We had had sex before, but we paid for a premium alcohol package. Mm. And literally, people just kept giving me drinks at our wedding. And so I remember getting in the car and I threw up all over <gasps> your wedding dress, my dre all over my wedding dress, all over the, the car that we were in. And I remember my husband's name is Brandon. Brandon getting out his side of the car, coming over to me, like the driver stopped and everyone's trying to like <laughs> clean me up and everything. And so we get to, I can't remember, what, I think we were at the Ritz um, up the street. Mm -hmm. And so we get to the Ritz and I could not walk. So he had to carry the me. The wedding girl. <laughs> the bride. The bride. He, the bride. <laughs> the yes, I am not walking. He had to carry me in the hotel. I remember him saying I was heavy. Um, <laughs> And I remember some passerby saying, I want to go to her wedding because mm -hmm. I'm like just dangling, you know, as he is like carrying me. Brandon forgets our hotel room. So he comes back down the hotel to get the key. Either he forgot the hotel number or lost the key. So we, you know, come back down, go right back up. And literally we both just went to sleep in our tuxedo and dress. And that was our wedding night. <laughs> Cheers to y'all. That's, fun. That's I an feel amazing. Like that would be me. <laughs> and you're still night. married to this day. So we that's are all right. still married. You it's, had a night. I always, I always feel like attorneys marry attorneys. Is he an attorney? He's an engineer. Okay. I okay. would not marry another attorney. Why not? Y'all, what are you too much? <sighs> so. No time. No one would be with the kids. Um, you have a lot of practice areas that are a little bit more work life balance friendly. Mm -hmm. But and and I will say this, and I went to UGA Law for um, law school. So hopefully no one feels any type of way. But a lot of the male attorneys in law school were just a little too conservative for me. Mm. Like I still want to be need a little fun. Yeah. Like they, they thought they were the prize. And so I was like, no, like I need more of a, you know, a chase. Mm -hmm. Um, and they just wanted the females to chase them. So I was like, oh yeah, no. I love to hear honesty. But if you were speaking of honesty, if you were ever going to get a divorce, which we don't put that on you, but I just have to ask because I have you here. Would you be your own divorce attorney or would you seek? Do, do you have like an attorney that you would talk to? So I have a law partner. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably tag him as like co-counsel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, no one would represent me better than me. I, I know that's right. That would be crazy to be married Adrian, to a divorce attorney and be going through a divorce. You know you about to lose. She about to find all the loopholes. I already know everything. I'm like, you know what? What What do you want? Can we just talk about it here before we have to go through all the things? Please. 
And don't <gasps> have me looking foolish. Dennis, thank you so much. <laughs> like, you. you don't understand how long we've been waiting to have an episode like this. And it was really funny because mouth. the way that I found you, like, y'all, I don't, we don't know Candace personally. I don't know mm -hmm. her personally. I was looking for a wedding planner on really? Instagram. And in my searches, uh, divorce attorneys kept coming up. And I was like, what? Isn't that ironic? Because I wanted to do an episode about like wedding planning and mm -hmm. the dream wedding that you Things think that happen. you, well, no, just the wedding that you think you could have. Can you actually afford it? Mm. Um, and then you came mm. up and I was like, mm, I like this. It's a little <laughs> more spicier. <laughs> so if anybody wanted to contact you, book you, uh, they're going through a divorce, they have questions, they want a consultation or they just want to follow you on Instagram, where can people find you? So I just came off a of social media hiatus, but I'm on Instagram my Instagram handle is at Attorney Little, um, A T T O R N E Y L I T T L E. My office number is 678-949-9756. That baby gave y'all the phone number. So if you got <laughs> questions and you oh, need my. help. Yes, do not DM me about your divorce. Yeah, you that's need to call. Ghetto. Please call me. That's good. Because I feel like if you DM somebody about your divorce, you can't afford to pay for the the functions. But you know what? Oh, you know what I am going to ask? Because we asked the therapist is, let's say somebody can't afford to book, to get a divorce attorney. Are there free options? Or y'all like, no, y'all got to. Yeah. So I do charge a consultation fee. Um, there are some attorneys who don't charge a consultation fee. Mm -hmm. Atlanta Legal Aid, I feel like they do their own income check to see if you qualify for like legal aid and, you know, discounted is that more services. So for like violence? So it can be. So okay. with like, Petitions for protective <laughs> orders, those are free. You can't just be like, I want to leave this nigga and I can't afford to. Can somebody <laughs> help me? Yeah. You yeah. Be I see the billboards for $500 divorces. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, $500, that could be a lot for somebody. Yeah. That's why I was exactly, saying, what are the Sean? free options? <laughs> she was like, mm, you want to leave him off. So I will say this, though. Um, there are a lot of really good blogs. Um, Meriwether and Tharp. I shouldn't even be shouting them out, but mm -hmm. Meriwether and Tharp, they have a really good legal blog. Mm -hmm. So if you Google child custody, Meriwether and Tharp, a bunch of their articles will come up and they are a trusted like firm of Georgia divorce attorneys. Um, so that's one way to kind of do it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Fulton County has a lot of their forms online. Mm -hmm. It's the same for every county. Just change Fulton to Cobb or Fulton to DeKalb. So a lot of the forms that you would need are already online. So I would just try. Mm -hmm. I do also consult. It's the same hourly rate, but, you know, I can just talk you through it if you don't mm -hmm. want full representation. Thank you so much. Y'all, please check her out for your services um, because I know many of you will be needing them. Too. <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening to the episode. We appreciate it so much. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. We're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean D. And until next week, you guys. Goodbye. goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Sweet on the dry. Bye. 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 Bye.